Namaste. So continuing with Aparokshana Bhutihi, we're going to go through the next section where it's proven from many different angles that the body is not the self. We still need to hear this again and again until we get it. And what does that mean? Well, we'll discuss that after the verses. The Supreme Purusha, known as I, Self, is but one, whereas the gross bodies are many. So how can this body be Purusha? I, Self, is well established as the subject of perception, whereas the body is the object. This is learnt from the fact that when we speak of the body, we say, this is mine. So how can this body be Purusha? It is a fact of direct experience that the I, Atman, is without any change, whereas the body is always undergoing changes. So how can this body be Purusha? Wise men have ascertained the real nature of Purusha from that Shruti text. There is nothing higher than he, the Purusha, etc. So how can this body be Purusha? Again, the Shruti has declared in the well-known text Purusha Shukta that all this is verily the Purusha. So how can this body be Purusha? So also it is said in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad that the Purusha is completely unattached. How can this body, wherein inhere innumerable impurities, be the Purusha? There again it is clearly stated that the Purusha is self-illuminated, so how can the body, which is inert, insentient, and illuminated by an external agent, be the Purusha? Moreover, the Karmakanda also declares that the Atman is different from the body and permanent, as it endures even after the fall of the body and reaps the fruits of actions done in this life. So here are so many reasons why the body is not the self. The self is a Purusha, Atman, Brahman, the universal Satchit Ananda, source and cause of everything. So how can that be limited to one individual? See, this is a delusion. This is a kind of insanity, actually. And in previous episodes, we talked about superimposition, avyaya. Avyaya means that the identity or qualities of one thing are superimposed on another incompatible thing. And of course, the classic example is the rope and the snake. One goes out in the evening and sees this coiled up thing and thinks, oh, that's a snake. No, it's just a rope. Well, what happens there? One sees this object, which bears a superficial resemblance to a snake, and then brings up a memory from some past experience maybe just hearing about a snake. And this causes fear and running away and shouting, hey, there's a snake, and so on. But the snake doesn't really exist. The snake is a superimposition on the rope. So these are two completely different things with different attributes different causes, different natures. And similarly, the body 
and the self are two completely different things. In fact, they're opposite in so many ways. So how can we superimpose the self on the body or the body on the self? It's logically impossible. Huh? That is not logical, Captain. <laughs> but it's a delusion. It's a type of insanity. It's nuts. So to call the body I, or to think of it as myself, this is delusion. This is insanity. And it leads to so many negative consequences for everyone. For example, if I think that the body is myself, if the body gets into some difficulty, then I'm going to be upset. I'm going to worry. I'm going to be in fear. Just like the fear felt by a person who mistakes a rope for a snake. The fear is real. But the perception that causes it is unreal. The snake is simply an illusion, a hallucination. Oh, I remember one time I was out walking in the woods at night. It, this was in Michigan in the winter. It was cold. And I was walking along a narrow trail. And suddenly something brushed my face. Huh? And I had a, a vision of, like, you know, vampire bats or something. <laughs> flying, attacking me, and I ran back, you know, along the trail. And then I went, wait a minute. There aren't any vampire bats at 9 o'clock on a freezing night in Michigan. Duh. So I went back and I looked carefully. And what it was was simply a tree branch with some dry leaves on it. And when I brushed the, the branch with my head, the leaves made a noise. And, it, it, you know, my brain hallucinated this whole story about bats. Why? Well, because bats make a kind of noise like that when they first take off. Once they're flying, they're silent. But when they first take off, they make a bit of a flapping sound, kind of like a bird. So, <laughs> this is delusion. See, this is a hallucination, a dream, a waking dream. So, we are all in this delusion. And, of course, it doesn't end there. For example, when we try to teach or share this spiritual knowledge, people take it wrong. We have to use words because words are the only medium that we have to reach you through the internet or even in person. We have to use words to describe the changes in consciousness that lead to enlightenment. So, of course, the words are not consciousness. The words are only symbols. Yet, People become attached to the words and think they are the things that they represent. And so, for example, in the case of uh, Atma Vichara, which is really the topic of this whole work, people think that simply thinking about who am I is Vichara. It's not. Well, it's a kind of Vichara. So say you're a musician and you're doing research on a piece by some composer, let's say Bach. And the ultimate aim of doing the research, which is all scholarly and verbal in books, you know, is to play the piece better, isn't it? Simply reading the books or discussing with colleagues is not going to make you play better all by itself. 
you have to get out the instrument and practice and put the knowledge into action. So similarly, we can discuss and discuss, we can hear and read about Atma Vichara, so many stories about Ramana Maharshi and so forth. But unless we actually sit down and go into our minds and change our consciousness, change our perceptions, really ultimately get rid of the mind, it's not Atma Vichara. It's name and form Vichara. In other words, it's the exact opposite of what we're trying to achieve in Atma Vichara. Atma means the self. So if we get all caught up in words and symbols, that's not the self. In fact, that's the opposite of the self name and form. The whole idea, I mean, the whole point is to get free from name and form and be situated in the self without thinking. So there's a technique, uh, actually a very powerful technique that I want to share with you to give you an example. As you know, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, uh, we have shared a lot about bhakti, devotion, to Shakti, the goddess, the universal mother, the creatrix. And this bhakti yoga is a preparation for meditation. It purifies the heart of extraneous desires and gives a platform for performance of karma yoga and acts of devotion leading to purification of the heart. And this is absolutely necessary for meditation. But even in meditation, it's possible to invoke the presence of the goddess with her mantra and then pray to her, please destroy this mind. Please get me out of this name and form. Uh, I'm caught in the clutches of the demon of name and form. Please release me. And you know, there are so many stories in the Shakta literature about her riding off on her lion and defeating the different demons. And the demons really don't have a chance because she is the one who creates them. So she can very easily uncreate them. So in the same way, in meditation, instead of wrestling with the mind ourselves, which is basically useless, because that only strengthens the mind, how can the mind get rid of the mind? It's not possible. So we can invoke the goddess and pray to her, please help me overcome this mind. Please attack this demon mind and get it out of the way. And this can lead to wonderful realizations. And also we talked about Atma Vichara as standing in the question. What does that mean? It means we're not using names, we're not using words, we're not using concepts even but we're simply standing in the space of the question, who am I? We are literally becoming the question, who am I? And even if we know the answer, I'm the self, in words, that's not what we're looking for. We are looking for the experience. We are looking for the state of being that I am the self. Aham Brahmasmi is more than just a mantra. It's more than just a clever saying. It's more than simply words and symbols, names and forms. It is being. And that 
is authentic enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.